Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to the next agenda item. That's item 10.0, reporting to Education Licensing Committee. I'm the chairperson of this committee. Uh, BRN moderator, can you please uh, elevate Dr. McCarthy to the uh, participant level, please? Marianne, Marianne, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Perfect. Good afternoon, everyone. Marianne McCarthy, nursing education consultant and the liaison to the Education and Licensing Committee. Thank you, uh, Dr. McCarthy. Will you please uh, move on with the agenda items? Yes, I will. Agenda, agenda item 10.1, discussion and possible action regarding whether to recommend ratification of minor curriculum revisions and acknowledge the receipt of program progress reports. Per board policy, nursing education consultants may approve minor curriculum changes that do not significantly alter philosophy, objectives, or content. Approvals must be reported to the Education Licensing Committee and to the board. Minor curriculum revisions include the following categories. Curriculum changes, work study programs, preceptor programs, and public health certificate programs. A list of schools who have submitted minor curriculum revisions and progress reports that have been approved by the NDCs is in your materials packet as table minor curriculum revision and table progress reports. This is a consent agenda item. This is Michael Jackson. I make a motion that we accept. It's Ken Marlboro, I'll second that motion. Any discussion from the board members? If there is no discussion from the board members, please open it up for public comment. We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in the request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing in the question box. I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in. I would like to make a comment. President Jackson, there are no public requests for comment. Would you like me to close the window? Uh, yes, please close the window. Um, at this time, I'd like to uh, call for the vote. Michael Jackson votes yes, and I will abstain from or recuse myself from Miracosta College and Southwestern College. Ken Marlboro? Marlboro votes yes. Dolores Trahilia? Trujillo votes yes. Elizabeth Woods? Woods, yes. Imelda Seha Bakowitz? Seha Bakowitz, yes. Karen Skelton? Skelton, yes. Mary Fagan? Fagan, yes. This concludes our vote. Thank you very much. Agenda item 10.2. Discussion and possible action regarding whether to recommend ratification of clinical facility approval or other action. According to board policy, nursing education consultants may approve clinical facilities that are in compliance with regulation. Approvals must be reported to the Education Licensing Committee and to the board. A list of schools who have submitted clinical site documentation and have been approved by the NECs is in your materials packet as table clinical agency or faculty, or, excuse me, facility approval. This is a consent agenda item. I make a motion that we accept. I'll second that, Woods.
Can we open it up for public comment? We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for the members of the public to see how they should type in the request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give you a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. President Jackson, there are no public requests for comment. Would you like me to close the window? Uh, yes, please close the window at this time and we'll call for the vote. Michael Jackson votes yes. Ken Marlboro? Marlboro, yes. Dolores Trujillo? Trujillo votes yes. Elizabeth Woods? Woods, yes. Imelda Sehabakowitz? Imelda Sehabakowitz, yes. Karen Skelton? Skelton, yes. Mary Fagan? Fagan, yes. This concludes our vote. Thank you very much. Agenda item 10.3, discussion and possible action regarding acceptance of program progress report with discussion and possible action to address any performance gaps, including actions described in California Court of Regulation, Title 16, Section 1423.2, Subdivision A. For um, East Los Angeles College Associate Degree Nursing Program. I am the NAC for East Los Angeles College and I'll be presenting this program. Joining me on the line is Dr. Christine Chandler, the Program Director, and Dr. Armida Ornelas, the Vice President. At the November 2019 board meeting, um, ELAC was put on warning status with the intent to close. They are required to report at each ELC meeting and each board meeting. Reports for this meeting were submitted um, from the college administration and the nursing program. These reports are included in your packet. Um, new development, the faculty union recently changed its collaborative bargaining agreement, reducing nursing faculty instructional load from 18 to 15 teaching hours. This, is ma this was made retroactive to the start of the fall semester and this has put all full-time faculty on overload this semester meeting uh, to, meet this, uh, to finish before they can meet this requirement. To address this issue, um, nursing has submitted a request to hire three new full-time faculty, one in med search, one in psych, and one in pediatrics. Um, this is being reviewed at this time, and if it's approved, the hiring process will begin in late spring for the fall of 2021. Although overload is not a new thing for ELAC faculty, it does raise concerns at this time due to nervous changes in the nursing department, as well as the implementation of a new curriculum combined with the COVID-19 situation. This concludes my report. Thank you. What, what's the action that we took with uh, East Los Angeles at the committee meeting last month again, please? We um, accepted their progress report. I make a motion that we accept their progress report at this time. This is Malbro. I'll second that. Any discussion from the uh, committee? I mean, the board members? If no further discussion, please open it up for public comment. We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in the request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. 
Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Christine Chandler would like to make a comment. Go ahead, Christine. Thank you. This is Dr. Chandler, and I'd like to thank the board and Ms. Uh, Ms. Uh, McCarthy for continuing to support our program. As you know, the problems that we faced have been uh, longstanding, and it'll take longer than one semester to uh, fix. And as we go about with COVID, there's many uh, constraints that we're dealing with right now, but we are pushing forward on every single issue to improve the deficits identified and improve the program overall. Thank you. Board President Jackson, there are no requests for public comment. Would you like me to close the window? Uh, yes, please close the window at this time. And uh, I'll call for the vote. Michael Jackson votes yes. Ken Marlboro? Marlboro votes yes. Dolores Trujillo? Trujillo votes yes. Elizabeth Wood? Woods, yes. Imelda Seha Butkowitz? Seha Butkowitz, yes. Karen Skelton? Skelton, yes. Mary Fagan? Fagan, yes. This concludes our vote. Thank you very much. Agenda item 10.4, discussion and possible action regarding recommendation to continue deferred status until all non-compliances are resolved, including resources and, hire and hiring, and also to submit quarterly reports to the NEC. This is for Los Angeles City College Associate Degree Nursing Program. They will be presented by Do Donna Schutte, their nursing education consultant. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is Donna Schutte of uh, the NEC for LA City College. And with me on the line today is the program director, Dr. Christiana Bascaran. At the February 20th, 2020, uh, board meeting, the LA, uh, the BRN voted to defer action to continue approval of the LACC ADN program with progress reports to be presented at the May and October 2020 ELC meetings. And for, for this, for the October 2020 meeting, a cover letter and report were submitted for the nursing program, and this is, can be found in attachment one. And of the four areas of non compliance, Two areas are now in compliance and progress is continuing in the remaining two areas. All six recommendations have been completed. Last Friday, the program submitted an update. The update will be placed with today's meeting materials. The program continues to make progress and bringing the remaining two areas into compliance. Okay, uh, the first area of non-compliance I need to report on that is that is in progress is CCR section 1424D resources. Uh, the full-time instructional assistant skills lab hiring is planned within the next two months. The job description for simulation coordinator, a 0.2 FT reassigned time position, under, is under development at this time. And the full-time simulation technician hiring is scheduled for spring 2021. The very limited campus lab hours due to COVID-19 that are available to students are being uh, instructed by course clinical uh, faculty. And then counseling services are now being provided by two designated counselors and supervised by the Dean of Counseling Services with requirements met. The second area in progress is CCR section 1424H faculty type and number. Interviews are currently being held for the full-time psych mental health faculty position. The hiring for the full-time med surge faculty position will be held early spring 2021. To address full-time faculty numbers, the enrollment of students for spring 2021 will remain decreased from 40 to 20 students 
who address full-time faculty numbers. And this is the end of the report. Dr. Bassram is here for any additional questions. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any public comments related to this? Because I don't think there's any action for the board to take at this time. We'll leave it unchanged. Okay, to uh, continue with a deferred action for continuing approval with with quarterly reports and that's back correct. in and that's back correct. six months. Okay. Yes, that's correct because they haven't come into compliance with all the items that are listed. Okay. That sounds good. Are there any comments clarify, from the board? Just to clarify, Mr. Jackson. Um, so to continue deferred status until all the non-compliances are um, resolved and submit for uh, reports? That's correct. I don't think that requires a vote right now because we're not changing anything with them. Correct. I just want to make sure I do have to send a letter to them um, about our discussion. So I just want to make sure that I have what you need. Do, do they come back in a certain time or just when the non-compliances are fulfilled? They could come back as soon as their uh, two non-compliance items have been uh, fulfilled. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Donna. Moving thank on you. to agenda item 10.5. Were, were we gonna do public comment? Oh, my apologies. Do we need to if we're not voting? I guess we do. We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in the request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comment. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in. I would like to make a comment. Christine Baskaran would like to make a comment. Go ahead, Christiana. Hello, Mr. President. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, with the given situation, what we are faced with the COVID-19, you know, since the October meeting, we are making constant progress and, uh, you know, we are making every effort to bring all the areas into compliance. So we are going for the mental health hiring. The interviews is going to take place next week. And also the instructional assistant and then the simulation coordinator point two will be hired in maybe in another, uh, the instructional assistant in the next two weeks and the simulation coordinator within a month. So, you know, like uh, as I explained in the previous meeting, you know, our previous efforts, uh, the candidates rescinded, even though we offered the position due to COVID-19 and our in-campus activity is very limited and it is being handled by the clinical faculty. So, and then at this point, we don't need an instructional assistant or simulation person in campus. And then our other hiring faculty will be done in the in the month of February. With all these in place, I really request BRN to consider and take us off of this deferred status and give us the continuing approval. Uh, and then we will report to the board every six months, our, our every quarter with our progress. This is my sincere request. Please take us off of this uh, deferred action and give us the continuing approval. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your comments and your presentation at this time. Uh, you're more than welcome to come back in January for the committee meeting for education licensing. Board President Jackson, there are no more requests for public comment. Would you like me to close the window? Uh, yes, please. Thank you. Agenda item 10.5, discussion and possible action regarding recommendation to place program on morning status with the intent to close the program. 
Continue current action plan and submit quarterly reports to the NEC. No enrollment changes at this time for Mount St. Mary's University Associate Degree Nursing Program. This will be presented by Loretta Melby, our Executive Officer. Thank you. Um, I am Loretta Melby. I'm the Executive Officer for the Board of Registered Nursing. I am presenting Mount St. Mary's as um, I used to be their nursing education consultant. Um, Mount St. Mary's um, is a, has an associate degree in nursing program. They uh, did a continuing approval visit on 6 of 16. Their upcoming approval visit um, is was done as well. The reason that we came to see them is they had a two year less than 75% pass rate. Um, the first year, which was in 2017, 2018 academic year, we notified them with uh, the first year less than 75% pass rate as per our board policy and asked for an action plan. That action plan was submitted and they did make movement on that action plan to improve their pass rates. Subsequently, the next year, 2018, 2019, they had another less than 75% pass rate, this time dropping down to 57.26% for NCLEX first time test takers. Um, we did at that point reach out and ask for a self study and scheduled a one day continuing approval um, visit so that we can go on campus and evaluate the program, um, the administration of the program, faculty, meet with faculty and students. Um, however, that scheduled that was scheduled right when COVID broke, um, broke out. So that was then rescheduled and was now rescheduled from that March visit to take place in fall. During that time lapse from the March visit to the fall visit, we ended up getting another cycle of NCLEX uh, pass rates, this one to reflect the academic year 2019 to 2020. They did increase their pass rate up to 64.07, but that is still below our less than 75% um, NCLEX pass rate threshold. Um, on review, uh, we did, they are working diligently to correct these. They are now working with their, um, they have a bachelor's program as well that is approved. They are now partnering with them and they are working to bring themselves um, forward, answer the issues, identify the issues um, and uh, make improvements in their program. It is important to note that there has been quite a bit of turnover um, within NECs as, as well. The NEC, I was uh, assigned to them for years and then abruptly in October, um, there was a switch in NECs. It was October, 2019, so a year ago. Um, and there was an NEC assigned for two months. I continued on as a mentor during that time because I had the history of the program. And then Dr. Carol Vela subsequently retired. Um, so then I regained that uh, program so there was a two month um, time frame that has been mentioned in presentations where there was a change in NFCs. Um, I took the program back over. I continued to work with that program until COVID broke out. And then I was uh, appointed as the uh, acting executive officer. And then at that point, I transferred this program to Dr. Heather Sands. Um, and she has been um, following this program since then. And she was the one with the supervising NEC, Audrey Caraway, who did the visit um, at Mount St. Mary's to evaluate them on this. Um, one um, comment that has been said at the previous meeting that is because of the delay with the COVID um, visit where we had to cancel the March visit, that now we had a, a, a subsequent academic year of low and collect pass rates that may be influencing our board's decision. Um, for time frame and to kind of go back to board process, what is important to understand is that um, even with a visit that could have taken place, it would have had to have been scheduled, um, taken place, completed, reports written, and then submission to the ELC. 
ELC comes in August and then was followed with a board meeting in September. We get our quarterly reports, our annual reports, sorry, when it closes at the end of June for the academic year. So by the time that we would have been presenting this to our board in the um, September board meeting, that we would have had the third year of low NCLEX pass rates. Additionally, with a two year and less than NCLEX pass rate, less than 75 NCLEX pass rate, what could have occurred is, as we've seen in the, the previous presentation, is possibly a deferred status, um, which would have required quarterly reports. If we would have been able to get them on the ELC committee and two board prior to the August ELC meeting, there would have been a quarterly report that was required, which would have then brought them back to ELC and then onto board again for August and September. And so we would still have had the third year less than 75% pass rate. Um, we do have school representation on the line. I know that they are anxious and wanting to present. So I will at this point stay on the line, but I will turn this over to them so that they can um, make comments. Michael and Leah, your mics are unmuted. Hi, uh, this is Dr. Leah Fitzgerald. Um, um, thank you, uh, Loretta, for um, that summary. Um, I would just like to thank the NECs for all their support. And um, uh, we are on track with these interventions and uh, we have them in place. Um, many that, that you have, I'm sure, in front of you with the report. and. Uh, we feel quite confident that they'll be reflected in the forthcoming NCLEX scores. Thank you. This is Michael Ashans. I'd also like to thank um, everybody and Loretta for her presentation and really um, want to say how much I appreciate her drawing out the timeline and the gap that occurred um, in terms of process, and I'm hoping when the decision is made today that that is really considered um, when making a determination about moving to um, place us on a warning status with intent to close. I, I do hope that we can rephrase that. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, item uh, 10.5 this is Michael Jackson. I make a recommendation. We go along with the uh, committee's uh, recommendation that we place the school on warning status. Do I have a second? This is Mary Keegan. I second. <clears throat> Are there any public Comment. I mean, before we go to public comments, are there any comments from the board? Seeing no public comments, can you open it up? I mean, seeing no board comments, can you open it up for public comment, BRN moderator? We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in the request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Board President Jackson, there are no requests for public comment. Shall I close the window? Uh, yes, please. And we'll call for the vote. Michael Jackson votes yes. Ken Marlborough? 
Malbro, yes. Dolores Trujillo. Trujillo, yes. Elizabeth Woods. Woods, yes. Imelda Sehabakowitz. Sehabakowitz, yes. Karen Skelton. Skelton, yes. Mary Fagan. Fagan, yes. This concludes our vote. Thank you very much. Agenda item 10.6. Discussion and possible action regarding recommendation to accept the feasibility study for a new pre-licensure nursing education program for Arizona College Baccalaureate Degree Nursing Program. This will be presented by Badri Caraway, Supervising Nursing Education Consultant. Good afternoon. Hello. We hear you, Badri. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon. This is Badri Caraway, Supervising Nursing Education Consultant. Um, I'm presenting uh, the, uh, the Arizona College Baccalaureate Degree Nursing Program Feasibility Study. Uh, on February 19, 2020, Dr. Patrick Robinson, Interim Program Director, on behalf of the Arizona College, submitted a feasibility study seeking approval to offer a new baccalaureate degree and nursing program. The proposed location for that um, program will be um, located at 3401 Cent Center Lake Drive, Suite 300, Ontario, California. Arizona College is a private educational institution formed by EduVision. The college was originally established in 1990, a partnership of pharmacists founded the Arizona School of Pharmacy Technology <clears throat> in Phoenix, Arizona. In 2012, the name was changed to to Arizona College and currently operate under the direction of a board of directors and led by the president and CEO, Mr. Nick Nancy. The Arizona Board of Nursing awarded the approval to the Arizona College Nursing Pre-Licensure DSM program on February 4, 2013 and the campus dean of the nursing and the program director is responsible for the daily operations and management of the program at each Arizona college campus. In terms of the accreditation status, Arizona college is accredited by the accrediting world of the health education school. And the BSN degree program is accredited by the commission and the Collegiate Nursing Education, CCNE. Arizona College received the initial accreditation in 1994 and was awarded continuing accreditation to 2022. Arizona College has approval by the Arizona Board of Nursing in Nevada, Texas, Florida, and now the Western Florida, California. All of those information is provided in, in your document. In terms of the geographic description uh, of the location, the inland empire of Southern California is a region east of the Los Angeles. The inland empire is the nation's 13th most populous metropolitan area. Arizona College's proposed program feasibility study included the detail of the description uh, of the Ontario uh, area and all, also the characteristics of the population in the inland empire. In terms of the application and the enrollment pool, Regional Nursing Summit Summary Report is included in the document for, you, for your review. Arizona College of Nursing um, surveyed 30 prospective students in the Ontario area, 67% of them, they um, indicated a preference for a BSN degree in comparison to the ADN, and perceived that the employers would prefer BSN prepared nurses. 77% of the uh, respondents experienced difficulty achieving, uh, achieving admission to the nursing program. 
57% had been denied or were placed on the waiting list. 43% of the respondents were aware of the Arizona Quality Nursing Program. 80% of them indicated their interest in a private education. 60% indicated interest in enrolling in an MDSM program in the Ontario area. Arizona College is proposing to have a three-time admission in fall, spring, and summer, and enrolling 40 students each time for the total of 120 students each year. The program estimates an attrition rate of 10% over the first five years of the program. It is anticipated that the campus will eventually have a consistent census of approximately 190 students. In terms of the budget and commission, the initial cap capital expenditure is estimated to be around 1,400,000. As of today, they have been spent in the Ontario campus around 111,000 for the development of the Ontario campus. The projected tuition is 125,000 or 994 per credit hour, plus For the students that enter the program with all prerequisites completed, the tuition will be for 70 credit program is around $64,444. The projected Ontario BSN budget is included in the material that I have presented to you. In terms of the financial aid, Arizona College of Nursing participates in the Federal Student Aid Title IV program including program, supplemental educational opportunities, and others. In terms of the resources, Arizona College will secure the needed initial faculty and staff approximately eight weeks prior to beginning of the operation of the program, and hire additional faculty and staff as appropriate. The proposed PSN program will initially employ 2.5 uh, FTE a full-time faculty who meets the requirement funded in the California Code of Regulation 1425. In terms of their curriculum, the proposed curriculum of the BSN program is submitted in Appendix E6 of this report, and the program consists of 120 semester credit offered in a format of 20 months of the continuous full-time attendance for the BS entity. The curriculum includes 44 semester units in the art and science of nursing, 22 units of theory, and 22 units of the clinical. All clinical practice courses are um, uh, coupled with the uh, simultaneously or concurrently with the theory. The curriculum was designed specifically to meet all BRN um, curriculum uh, requirement um, as the CCR section 1426. To incorporate all these and essential also was included the ANA scope of the standards and nursing practice has been incorporated in that. Both the form for the total curriculum plan as we a PDDP05 and also required curriculum plan. Uh, both forms have been completed and within the requirement of CCR 1426. In terms of the clinical site, Arizona College of Nursing plans to join the inline entire nursing and allied health services education consortium for placement and will attend quarterly meetings to collaborate in clinical rotation scheduling. Also, they are planning to um, utilize the weekend and those time that it's not taken by the other or is less, um, I think, assigned or rotated by the other programs. This will make it significantly easier for the Arizona College Nursing to utilize clinical time and to offer the institution that they are not 
using those for clothing uh, or choosing not to use those clinical sites. The Arizona College of Nursing submitted the required clinical authorization for ADD 18 a clinical agency support list, verification, and also uh, support of all of those documents have been included in the my report to you. All submitted documents have been reviewed and they are all meeting the BRM regulatory requirements for your review and consideration. Thank you. I have a representative of the program online for their comment. This will conclude my report. Thank you. Is the representative on the line and ready to present? Good afternoon. This is, uh, good afternoon, uh, President Jackson and members of the Board of Registered Nursing. My name is Patrick Robinson. I am the Provost and Senior Vice President of Academic Affairs for Arizona College and for this feasibility stage of the process, I am serving as the interim director of the proposed BSN degree program in Ontario. Just wanted to begin um, by thanking Ms. Caraway for uh, her support and guidance in the development of the feasibility study and to uh, thank the members of the BRN for the opportunity to be here today to provide any clarification and to answer your questions. On behalf of all my colleagues at Arizona College, we do look forward to joining the California nursing education community and collaborating with our both nursing practice and education colleagues in the Ontario and surrounding communities to ensure an adequate quality uh, nursing workforce. I'll be happy to um, answer any questions at this point. Are there any questions from the committee? Seeing no questions from the committee at this time. This is accepting the feasibility study. I remind the board that this is just accepting the feasibility study. And my recommendation is that we accept the feasibility X study. It's Ken Marlboro, I'll second it. Second. Okay. Sorry. Public comment? We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they can type in the request for comment. Sorry. Um, I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Board President Jackson, there are no requests for public comment. Would you like me to close the window? Oh, yes, please close the window and we'll call for the vote. Michael Jackson votes yes. Ken Marlboro. Marlboro votes yes. Dolores Trujillo. Trujillo votes yes. Elizabeth Woods. Woods yes. Imelda Sehabakwitz. Sehabakwitz yes. Karen Skelton.
Karen? Skelton, yes. Mary Fagan. Fagan, yes. That concludes our vote. Thank you very much. Agenda item 10.7. Discussion and possible action regarding recommendation to accept the initial self-study for a new pre-licensure nursing education program. Angeles College Baccalaureate Degree Nursing Program. I am the nursing education consultant for Angeles College and I will be presenting this program. Joining me on the line is Dr. Sasha Rabain, who is the program director. Angeles College has submitted an initial self-study for a new baccalaureate degree nursing program in Los Angeles, California. The agenda item summary contains the timeline from the letter of intention forward, including relevant program information. Angeles College has provided me with the, with the information needed for an initial new campus self-study and has addressed my, my questions both verbally and in the submitted documentation. A verbal site visit was completed in August of 2020 with myself and supervising NEC Badre Caraway in order to see the site, the resources, and the build out plans. The enrollment request is 30 students twice a year in the fall and spring. It will take three years to complete the program from admission to graduation for each student. The total enrollment in the third year and beyond is 180 students. And this is a correction from what I have in the AIS, which said 150 students. So it is 180 when they're at all, when they get to all cohorts yeah, up and going. Um, Dr. Rarang is prepared to answer any questions you may have, and this concludes my report. Good afternoon, member of the board. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. McCarty. Um, this is Dr. Sasha Rang with Angelus College, the Dean of Nursing. And at this point, we believe that Angelus College is pretty much ready to tackle the job to um, offer a generic BSN degree program. We are also here to comply with all the requirements, all of the uh, um, compliance issues that any program has to face and as mandated by the board. And so I would like to request that from the good office of the board members that ACLA is ready to open a BSN program and that we will serve California citizens with competent nurses who are able to think so that we could able to increase the diversity of our nursing in the uh, in our state. So at this point, I would like to entertain any uh, questions or comments from the members, please. Are there any comments from the board at this time? And reminder that this is the acceptance of the initial self-study for pre-licensure -pre program. Hi, this is Elizabeth Woods. I didn't see in the information provided the cost of the program. Hi, Ms. Woods. The cost of the program is $94,000 total. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, uh, this is Kim Marlboro. Um, I know this is just an initial study, but uh, I saw in your clinical uh, contract, you've only been able to secure about nine. You think that's enough for you to run your program? And can you explain that? Yes, the, uh, Mr. Marlboro, we have nine existing right now, and all of these are actually our existing uh, clinical facilities at this point, and we are using it for our uh, vocational nursing program. At the same time, currently, I am working with Providence um, Health System, and they're actually giving us some uh, opportunity to join one of their big hospitals here in uh, Southern California, Los Angeles, actually, in Santa Monica. We have uh, the big hospital, St. John's Hospital, and also I'm working with the uh, Southern California Kaiser Permanente as well. And um, we are looking at around at the area like the Panorama City and the, uh, the Valley area. So I do believe that we have the ability to provide our future students with a clinical um, experience that they need. 
At the same time, uh, even during this time in pandemic, I've also been a director of an other nursing program already. And um, we have provided our students with an ability to still comply with the uh, clinical requirements needed. So I do not see any situation here where and we're going to have an overlapping with other uh, schools and other uh, uh, programs. So we are very collegial when it comes to that. So I think we're at a good position to offer a clinical at this point. Okay, thank so you. So to our new board members, what the self, what the uh, uh, acceptance of an initial self-study is essentially approving the program if we accept the initial self-study. And I'd like to ask a question of one, one of our uh, board members who is a chief nurse executive officer, has COVID impacted clinicals in your facility? Um, this is Mary Fagan. We've actually been able to accommodate the students in socially distance um, with use, utilizing the waiver. So the 50% of clinical and pediatrics. Uh, once there is a vaccine and um, things, you know, we don't have to do socially distancing it all the time, um, we, we don't anticipate any problems um, accommodating the students. And when you, when you did the 50% uh, waiver, did some students have to, some schools have to decrease the size of their clinical cohort? No, no, they were, had, we had to be a little more creative with off shifts and weekends and what have you. Um, but, uh, and we also had some alternative sites that we hadn't typically used. Um, but so no, we weren't, there was no uh, school that had to decrease. We were able to accommodate all the peds uh, nurses. Because I know there's some schools that are still, uh, having challenges completing their clinicals and some of them even closed here locally where I am. I know several that had to close their programs until hospitals open back up. And we, we made the decision to open rather early because we know we're really the only place for pediatrics in San Diego and it would really cripple the programs. Um, but that being said, we haven't had any problems. There's been no transmissions between nursing students and you know, each other or patients or vice versa. Because so. pediatrics is one of the most challenging clinical spots to fill. Yeah. Are there any other comments and questions from the board? President Jackson, this is uh, Ken Marble. Uh, thank you for clarifying the, the self-study. I appreciate that. No problem. Was there somebody that was attempting to make a comment? Oh, uh, this is Dr. Lorang, um, President Jackson. I just would like to tell that uh, we have secured um, three clinics for our pediatric as well as our maternity uh, clinical rotation, and they're still open at this time. Thank you very much. Welcome. Are there any more comments from the board members? Dr. Morang, what uh, size uh, cohort were you anticipating? Is that for, for me to answer? Uh, yes, please. What uh, size cohort were you anticipating? So we are enrolling for the first year. Uh, we had we are uh, expecting to enroll 30 students for um, the spring of 2021 and another 30 students on the fall of 2021 for our uh, first year. So we have 60 all in all in our first year. And um, the first year is pretty much all uh, general education, and on the second year, that is when we're going to place our first cohort into clinical with 30 students. If nothing will fall off into that cohort. It's so only 30 students to begin with. Uh, once again, do we have any comments from the board? Any questions? I'm just curious, is that all pediatrics? Is that what you said? 
Um, no, the, the 30 students will be all uh, individual learners. Yeah. This yeah, comment was just in response to Michael's question about whether we be able to comment to students in the Seattle School in San Diego. Got it. Uh, seeing no more uh, questions from the board at this time, are there uh, are there any more presentations? If not, I'm going to make a motion that we accept the self study for a new pre licensure program, Angeles College Baccalaureate degree program. Ken Barbara, I'll second that motion. Are there any public comments? We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in. I would like to make a comment. Mary Lopez would like to make a comment. Go ahead, Mary. Hello, I'm Mary Lopez. I'm the Dean at the College of Graduate Nursing at Western University of Health Sciences in Pomona, California. Um, my comment is not connected to uh, my reaction to Angeles College opening in Los Angeles, um, but I do want to clarify a statement that was made by a board member in San Diego about clinical placement. In the Pomona area, and I would say in the Inland Empire in the Los Angeles area, there are many issues with clinical placements right now during the pandemic. Um, it's extremely difficult to get our current students placed and to get current students to graduate on time. Um, we have been very fortunate that uh, the Board of Registered Nursing has been collaborating with the DCA to extend waivers so that our students can graduate on time amid a pandemic without uh, the Board of Registered Nursing, working with the legislators, we would not be able to uh, have a pipeline of nurses to meet the state's nursing needs. Um, that said, we are barely hanging on by a thread to do our clinical placements, and I know that within our area, we are not alone. So I just wanted to clarify that and to publicly acknowledge our satisfaction with the Board of Registered Nursing extending these waivers and the work of the NECs. Thank you. And this is Mary Fagan. I'll comment too. The reason we're able to accommodate the students has been because we've been utilizing the waivers. So, thanks. Board President Jackson, there are no public requests for comments. Would you like me to close the window? Uh, yeah, you can close the window. Thank you very much. And I'll call for the vote. Uh, Michael Jackson votes yes. Ken Marlboro. Marlboro, yes. Dolores Trujillo. Trujillo, yes. Elizabeth Wood. Woods, yes. Imelda Sehabakwit. Sehabakwit, yes. Karen Skelton. Skelton, yes. Mary Fagan. Fagan, yes. This concludes our vote. Thank you very much. Agenda item 10.8, discussion and possible action regarding recommendation to accept changes to an approved nursing education program, Unitech College baccalaureate degree nursing program, an addition of a new campus or secondary location. I am the nursing education consultant for Unitech College. 
and I will be presenting this program. Joining me on the line is Dr. Abdel Yosef, who is the program director. Unitech is requesting a secondary campus. The agenda item summary gives the history and details related to their two current campuses, one in Fremont, California, and the other in Bakersfield, California, as well as their new request for a campus in Concord, California. Unitech has provided me with the information needed for an additional campus and has addressed my questions both verbally and in the written submitted secondary campus required documents. I made a virtual visit in July of 2020 to see the site, the resources, and build out plans. At the August 2020 ELC meeting, this agenda item was moved to October 2020. And the meeting packet includes an updated letter from Unitech College that followed the August 2020 meeting. Dr. Yosef is prepared to answer any questions you may have. This concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. McCarthy. President Jackson, would you like me to present? Yes, please, you could go ahead with an update for us. Absolutely. So as uh, we presented in the Education Committee, um, we talked about this region that in 2018, um, regional forecast of the RN workforce in California, this region has been identified as a region with uh, a shortage that's going to get worse over time. And as you know, that about 30% of the population in that region is over the age of 55. And the growth in the population of age 55 and higher been 27% increase between 2010 and 2018. At the same time, the number of first time testers in that region between 2015 to 2019 went down 2%. So, and the workforce age about 25% of them above the age of 60. Uh, we believe we can make a difference in that region. And we have established a clinical affiliation agreement with 33 clinical facilities. 17 of those are acute care hospitals with a variety of experience. And we were able to secure 23 new EDB 18 forms as of yesterday. So, and we have the uh, Attrition rate less than 1%, 0.8 on the current campuses with an NCLEX pass rate 89.6 for the RN in Fremont, as well as for the campus, the Concord campus, the annual VN pass rate is 90. So the campus culture is wonderful. They have the support and the experience to support this new BSN in Concord. And I'm ready to answer any questions the board members have. Are there any questions from the board? Hearing no questions or comments from the board, Michael Jackson votes to accept. Ken Marlboro votes yes. Dolores Trahilia. Trahilia votes yes. Oh, Elizabeth, is there any Elizabeth public Wood? comment? Wait, we are in Marlboro. Sorry, oh, that's, that's what I was waiting for. I'm sorry. We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in the request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment.
board president jackson there are no requests for public comment would you like me to close this window yes please close the window at this time and we'll call for the vote michael jackson votes yes ken marlboro marlboro votes yes dolores trahillo yes. elizabeth woods woods yes Imelda Sehabakowitz. Sehabakowitz, yes. Karen Skelton. Skelton, yes. Mary Fagan. Fagan, yes. This concludes our vote. Thank, thank you very much, much Dr. McCarthy. And thank you, the Education Committee, for supporting us. Moving on to agenda item 10.9. Discussion and possible action regarding acceptance of changes to approved nursing education programs. 10.9.1, Chamberlain College Baccalaureate Degree Nursing Program, Rancho Cordova. This is a major curriculum revision with an enrollment increase. This is going to be presented by Donna Schutte, their nursing education consultant. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Donna Schutte, the Nursing Education Consultant for Chamberlain University College of Nursing, Rancho Cordova. And with me today on the line is the university's program director and campus president, Dr. Foja Arizali. A Chamberlain uh, University is requesting an enrollment increase uh, to their currently approved annual enrollment of 30 students three times a year, January, May, and September to 45 students three times a year for a total annual increase from 90 to 135 students beginning January 2021. Uh, the program received initial BRN approval uh, November 5th, 2015. The university part of Adelem Global Education Incorporated is accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. The three-year program is CCNE accredited through 2024 and it is located in the greater uh, Sacramento region. The program student population is diverse in age, gender, ethnicity, and prior employment experiences. Uh, the university's financial investment for this enrollment increase ensures campus space and student support resources with 19 new faculty or staff positions planned. And you can see uh, the plan in, uh, in attachment number one. Consistent with recommendations from the 2018 Regional Nursing summits, the planned new clinical placements, which begin January 2022, will move from acute care into non-acute settings such as telehealth and hospice. A five-year EDP P11 nursing curriculum and clinical facilities form maps the use of clinical placements. See attachment two. This enrollment increase request was an agenda item and discussed at the June 8th, 2020 Sacramento area nursing education, Sakane consortium meeting with no concerns communicated by members. Uh, the Sacramento region, Sacramento County, currently has five pre-licensure programs. Since 2015, there has been an average of 369 graduates each year. In 2019, 39.3% of qualified applicants became enrolled in the program. For the greater Sacramento metropolitan area, which includes surrounding counties, there are nine pre-licensure programs with an average of 540 graduates per year, and only 36.5% of qualified applicants became enrolled in the nursing program in 2019. Uh, Chamberlain uh, reported 104 qualified applicants with 90 applicants, 86.5% enrolled in 2019, and their attrition rate was 23.7 for 2018-29 and 15.1% for 2019-20. Uh, Spetz and Lee in 2018 described RN labor markets as balanced in the Sacramento region, but with a greater proportion of RNs at or above retirement age. The CA of California Employment Development Department in 2020 projects a 21.4% increase for 14,720 new job openings in this area by 2026. The California Chief Nursing Officer Survey of 2017 uh, cited that the CNO demand for RNs across California the strongest, uh, was strongest in the Sacramento and Northern County regions, as well as the San Francisco Bay areas. 
This program's NCLEX pass rates for 2018-19 were 93.22 percent. For 2019-2020, 97.75 percent. And for the first quarter of 2020, uh, 2021, it is 100 percent with all 30 graduates passing. The total estimated cost for the 126 credit hour total program is $96,595. And this concludes my report. Dr. Ferrazzoli would like to address the board and she is also here to answer any of your questions. Thank you, Dr. Schuette, for your presentation and partnership. President Jackson, Vice President Malbro, and our distinguished board members, Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I am Dr. Fazia Perroz Ali. I have the pleasure of serving as the campus president and program director for Chamberlain College of Nursing in Rancho Cordova. I would like to highlight the four points uh, from Dr. Shudi's presentation. Chamberlain College proven program with excellent outcomes. Fourth quarter NCLEX pass rate is 100%. The shortage of nursing workforce in our rural community Rancho Cordova and for which we have support of the community that we serve. The outpouring desire of our community to become nurses, no additional strain on clinical placements as we will continue to use telehealth and hospice. I know that our ask of increasing by 15 students is very small, and many of the new programs start with double or even triple the size of my request. But this number was chosen in collaboration with the Board of Registered Nursing during my site visit last year, pre-COVID, because of our capacity and zero implications for clinical displacement. So I asked this committee to approve this small increase for a program that you know has shown to be successful in meeting student and community needs and outcomes so that we increase the pool of support to better serve our diverse Rancho Cordova community. Your approval today can make an enormous positive impact in the lives of our, of our community. I humbly request your approval to keep the pipeline of educating qualified healthcare providers going, and I'm available for questions. I thank you. Hi, this is Hi. Delisa, one of the one of the board members. Thank you for the um, statistic. I just have a question. Do you track um, job placement after your graduates are done with the program? Yes, we do. We do, we do track them to the best of our ability. And do you know offhand what those numbers are running? I would look them up, but I'll, I'll tell you, you know, and maybe this will give you a, a clear picture. Um, when I'm in very much contact with the individuals that graduate because we're such a small community and majority of our graduates are getting hired in our local uh, clinics, uh, hospice care, home health, ambulatory care, homeless shelter, schools, um, majority of them are getting uh, jobs. I would say that we're running at about 80, 80, 80%. And you, was acute care included in that? Acute care is definitely included, but our focus has been because we've, we've you know, the, the community is very much pulled together. And we knew that, you know, clinical placement is something that um, is, is strived at and, and looked at. So um, in the past two years, we've moved from acute care to the other areas like primary care, home health, ambulatory care, um, the homeless especially. Uh, and uh, uh, we do have acute care experience and uh, Dignity Health actually um, is one of our partners that has been hiring many of our graduates. And uh, actually the, the nursing students who um, have gotten uh, experience with them in being screeners uh, for them and then they, they end up hiring them so does that does that help does that answer your question yes it does thank you of course are there any questions from the board members regarding this, this reminder that this is an enrollment increase 
Seeing no questions from the board um, at this time for item 10.91, Michael Jackson, I'm going to vote no at this time. And the reason why I'm voting no is because we still don't know what's going to happen with uh, the pandemic at this time. As we see that more, more facilities are starting to close once again. Uh, we're going back into a purple tier in our area. So I'm going to vote no at this time. Board, Jackson, board President Jackson. Sorry, Board President Jackson, do we want public comment? Excuse me. Too many people were talking at the same time. Who was the person that was speaking? This is Marianne. I was asking if you were if you wanted to make a motion. I did. I said my motion was to vote no. Okay. We need a second. Dolores Trujillo, I second. Are there any public comments? We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for the members of the public to see how they should type in the request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Diane Rogers would like to make a comment. One second. Go ahead, Diane. Thank you, and thank you for giving me this opportunity. I, I urge you to reconsider your vote on this matter. As the president and CEO of the Rancho Cordova Chamber of Commerce, I see firsthand the impact that our members have in the community. Chamberlain has been an engaged member providing a much needed educational opportunity in industry that has very significant need. We urge you to please give the opportunity to Chamberlain to expand the number of positions for students. We understand that this will only scratch the surface, but it is a critical start. Um, we also recognize the need will continue to grow. Um, providing the community with qualified and well-trained nurses is what Chamberlain does and does well. Our community is well served by Chamberlain and we respectfully urge your reconsideration of this matter. Board President Jackson, there are no other public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? Seeing no other comments, yes, please close the window. I call for the vote at this time. Michael Jackson votes yes. Can I make a Margo? comment? Oh, I vote yes to my no motion. <laughs> Clarifying. Ken Marlboro? I vote no. Dolores Trujillo? I vote yes to the no increase. Elizabeth Woods. Uh, I vote uh, no. Woods, no. Imelda Sehabakwit. Uh, no, just to clarify, as opposed to his motion. Clarification. Yes. A no. Yes. A no is a a, a, a no is a, 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 to his motion, right? That's my understanding. Okay, so I don't agree with, my, with Michael. Can I make a comment? 
I don't yeah. know that it was open for. So uh, you know, with with this with this, uh, um, we don't know the future. I do know that we need nurses, and I know I do know that some of the um, hospitals are, are working with the schools to for the students to get their clinical hours. Um, so I'm gonna say no to your motion because I think we need to move forward. Um, and and uh, you know the director Loretta Malby can be work with some of these schools so that they can. Uh, partner with with the hospitals on clinical hours if that is the issue here. Karen Skelton. I need a clarification on what no means and what yes means. My motion was to vote for no enrollment increase. So, and you voted yes for your own motion, right? I voted to support my own motion to <laughs> say that I don't want an enrollment increase right now. Okay. I'm, I'm going to vote no. Shall I go through them again? I'm sorry. Just to clarify, BRN moderator, please go through the votes again. Okay. My motion is for no enrollment increase. Thank you. Ken Marlboro. Okay, since you put it that way, my my vote is for yes for an enrollment increase. Dolores Trujillo. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. If you want an enrollment increase, you would vote no, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so if you want an enrollment increase, you would vote Oh, no. And so Ken, Ken voted to allow the enrollment increase, so I, I would interpret Ken's vote to be a no vote to Michael's motion to reject the enrollment increase. This is Ken Marble. That is correct. I'm sorry if I confused everyone. No worries. So Ken is a no, um, and that, that's, that's what a no would mean. Dolores Trujillo. Trujillo votes no increase. Elizabeth Wood. I'm voting against Michael's proposal. So I guess I'm voting yes. I'm st it's, still, it's still unclear. Uh, no, if you're voting against his proposal, you're voting no. I'm voting <laughs> against the proposal, so I will vote no. Thank you. Imelda Sehabakowitz. Imelda Sehabakowitz votes no. Karen Skelton. Skelton, no. Mary Fagan. Fagan, no. This concludes our vote. Uh, so it sounded like the, the majority with a no on that, is that right? Moderator. Yes, sir. Okay, so the motion failed and, and somebody else can make a motion if you want. I make a motion to increase Chamberlain College a baccalaureate degree uh, nursing program. I'll second yes. that. To what? The proposal was to increase with 30 additional. What was it asked? The request thing? was to increase from 30 in the past three times a year to 45 three times a year. So from 90 a year to 135 students a year beginning in January of 21. It's an extra 15 students with each admission. So that's my motion. Do we have a second? Yes, I already did. I seconded okay. it. Thank you. Board President Jackson? No. Ken Marlboro? Marlboro, yes. Dolores Trujillo? No. 
Elizabeth Woods. Woods, yes. Imelda Sehabakowitz. Imelda Sehabakowitz, yes. Karen Skelton. Skelton, yes. Mary Fagan. Fagan, yes. This concludes our vote. So the vote appears to be two no's and the rest yes. Correct. Thank you. Agenda item uh, 10.9.2, discussion and possible action regarding acceptance of changes to an approved nursing education program. This is now for American Career College Associate Degree Nursing Program. They are requesting a major curriculum revision with an enrollment increase. This will be presented by Wayne Boyer, who is the nursing education consultant for this program. I'm Dr. Wayne Boyer, and I am the nursing education consultant for American Career College. With me is Mr. Albert McNames. He is the program director, has been since 2020, and it has been faculty since the program's inception. Uh, with him also is Tim Lee, who is the uh, uh, COO of American Career College. Or, yeah. uh, in June, American Career College, the Los Angeles campus, requested to increase their annual enrollments from 33 students twice a year in February and September to 30 students five times a year. They would be admitted in February, May, June, September, and December for a total enrollment of 150 students. The program uh, received initial BRN approval in November 20, 2014. The program cost is $74,225. NCLEX pass rates meet the BRN regulation. 2018-2019 was 93.2. 2019-2020 was 92.65, and 2021 first quarter is 100%. Program retention is for 2018-2019 is 86%, and attrition is 8%. The college is accredited by ABHES. The program located in Los Angeles serves a student population diverse in age, gender, ethnicity, and prior employment experience. The program reports 90 percent, 96% of program graduates are employed as registered nurses and 70% of total program graduates are employed within 15 miles of the campus. American Career College reports that a 252, <clears throat> excuse me, applications received uh, and 66 new enrollments for 2016-2017. The program has provided me with information needed supporting the enrollment increase. Uh, that was included in my full AIS and also attachments. I also want to add that uh, the program, Donna Schutte and I, did a virtual continuing approval visit on September 29th and 30th, and the program was found to be in full compliance with all BRN regulations. That completes my report. Thank you very much. Dr. Boyer, what are they asking for once again in their increase? They want to admit 30 students five times a year instead of twice a year. Are there any comments from the board? Yeah, this is Mary Fagan and the materials. It says that there's a surplus of nurses and new graduates in Los Angeles. Um, can you please address this and what, how that fits with the request for additional enrollment? Do you want me to, or do you want the program representatives? Whoever's in position to respond. Yes, this is cool. We can respond to that. You know, the surplus refers to the uh, a study that was done pre-pandemic, and it was uh, brought up at the 2018 Regional Nursing Summits. Um, however, I'd like to point to an article of June of this year, 2020. The article states that the NCSBN also reported that 252,000 new RNs entered the workforce in 2019 nationwide. 
However, their estimates suggest that our country needs double that, 550,000 new nurses to enter the workforce to address the more than 1 million nurse shortage projected by 2022. Looking at Los Angeles as the only area for these new graduates to, to, to be employed, lose the sight of the big picture and the need of our nations as graduates and graduates from other programs in Los Angeles will move to fill in these vacant positions and the dire nursing shortage, especially considering the current pandemic. Uh, the current pandemic has only exacerbated the need for more nurses. What is going on currently is forcing nurses, especially older nurses, to retire early or leave the profession entirely. Nurses trained in LA will not only work in LA, they will work all over the state of California and all over the country. Also in another article published by thehealthexec.com in October of 2018, cited California had the largest deficit of registered nurses versus any other state. Again, we point to our placement percentages 96% of our graduates, actually 98% now updated, of our graduates are placed in positions within Los Angeles, most of them within 90 days of graduation. There is a direct correlation between placement rates and the demand for nurses in Los Angeles. We have also submitted letters of support for our programs from letters from local CEOs and CNOs that support our program because they depend on our grads to fill their nursing open positions. As recently as last week, there was another article published in the OC Register that show that nurses from UC Irvine, as well as uh, representatives from the CNA, were rallying to bring attention to the nursing, nursing staffing shortages at their hospital. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. President Jackson, I have a, this is Ken Marlboro. I do have a, a question as well, if I may ask. Uh, go ahead, please. Okay. So in your packet, you talk about your clinical facilities, um, and you, you, you said that you identified them, but unfortunately, your Exhibit 1 is not in the packet. So I don't know the facilities that you've identified that you can handle 150 students per year. Can you list those off? Uh, and then also, you don't have Exhibit 2, which shows a chart projection of utilization of those clinical sites through February 20, uh, 2022. Yes, this so is, uh, mm -hmm. yes, sorry about that. Uh, we will answer that right now. So we, we did su uh, submit those documents to, to Dr. Boyer, so he may have them. Uh, but we do, we clearly have, have a chart. We can go over each of the clinical facilities, the dates and the times that they will rotate through there. Um, also, it's also important to point out that these these new students from the enrollment increases, these students would not hit any clinical rate rotations until 2022. So I understand the current pandemic does create some current questions with 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 clinical slots. These students would not hit any clinical rotations until 2022. Um, with that, I'll hand off to uh, Albert McNames, the program director, to talk about the clinical facilities. All right, thank you. So the facilities that we currently have, we have Abraham Global Medical Center, Bellflower Community Hospital, uh, College Medical Center, and they have multiple campuses. So the Hawthorne in the main, uh, Opeka, Huntington Park, uh, East LA Doctors, Hollywood Presbyterian, uh, Kindred Baldwin Park, uh, Kindred Hospital Paramount, which used to be called Promise, uh, LAC USC County, uh, Olive View County, uh, Opeka, Los Angeles Community Hospital, Norwalk Community Hospital, Southern California Hospital Culver City, Southern California Hospital Hollywood, Southern California Hospital Van Nuys, Shriners Children's uh, Hospital, and White Memorial. Yeah, and it's also important to note, note, notate that we put all those through. We're part of two consortiums here in Los Angeles County. Uh, both Pronto and CCPS. So we use the information, those two consortiums, to map out our clinical our clinical placements, and there will be absolutely zero displacement of any other programs, no displacement of any student uh, in, in those facilities that we're rotating through. We submitted EDP-18s as well as letter support from each of the facilities uh, uh, Mr. Big Names just uh, mentioned. Okay, thank you very much. Absolutely. This is Elizabeth Woods. I do have a question about, uh, I'm assuming you increased your uh, facu faculty? Yes, thank you, Ms. Woods. Actually, that's a really good question. If you look at the way we're actually going to set up the program, 
Um, it allows us to increase faculty, but more importantly, it allows us to hire more full-time faculty because every program, every every course will be taught every term. We'll be hiring more full-time faculty. It actually increases the student experience too, because the way the program's set up right now, if a student happens to fail a course, they have to wait sometimes, you know, two to three terms, which is up to 30 to you know 40 weeks uh, before they could retake the class. The way the class will be structured right now, every class will be be repeated every term. So if a student does have to fail it, they, if a student does fail a course, they don't have to wait out. They can repeat it with the next with the next cohort. Uh, but yes, there will be increase in faculty and including full time faculty. Thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Are there, any, other, are there any comments, any other comments from the board members? Seeing no other comments from the board members, we just approved a, another school in the Los Angeles area. I, other schools have complained about being able to to have access to clinicals um, as a, if we can respond to that as a as a front as a frontline healthcare worker i see the impact of what happens with nursing and i see the impact of what happens with nursing students as well are there any other comments from the board members the school would like to make a comment. Uh, okay, go ahead. Were there any comments from the board members? Is somebody, was somebody gonna speak from the board? Yes, this is Dolores Trujillo. Go ahead. Um, you just echoed what I initially was going to ask them about was clinical placement, because this is a significant increase from 66 to 150. And there's already issues with clinical placement in Los Angeles and Southern California area. So that would be my major concern. Okay, is that a question for the school? I am just stating my concern okay. with your- With our submission, we, we clearly demonstrate there's zero clinical displacement of any student. And we understand that some schools have had problems with clinical placement, we haven't. Um, this increase actually doesn't require us to have any more clinical sites or clinical slots. It's just full utilization of our, our currently approved slots uh, throughout the year. Um, we understand the, the, the stress that it puts, but we're not even fully utilizing 50% simulation. I know a lot of schools out there have had struggles, but our students have been resilient. Our program's been resilient. We've been flexible, and we've been able to get our students um, the, the clinical rotations and the clinical education that they need. If you look to our student outcomes we have over 90 percent retention we have over a 90 percent inclex um, pass rate for almost three years in a row um, our last three quarters have been have been hundred percent our current quarter inclex is 20 for 20 so now we'll have four quarters of, in a row of 100 percent inclex pass rates um, our placement our placement rates for our RN since the beginning of the program is over 95 percent including 98 percent this year um, the people of California the patients of California especially Los Angeles deserve quality nurses like American Career College is putting out there. We are a school in the underserved area of Los Angeles that critically needs access to education and critically needs access to health care. Thank you for that information. Although you are stating those statistics at an enrollment of 66 students or two cohorts, I'm just trying to clarify. You, you yes, those, those are our st those are our statistics for for the previous years. We've been two years of 66. Uh, for for the previous five years, we do not forecast or foresee any drop off in our student outcomes. Our student outcomes have improved year over year. Uh, we've invested all the resources we have in the program, including a simulation lab. Um, so the the ability to grow our program will not see any drop off in our student outcomes. You know, and, and the board has already approved, you know, enrollment increases. It improved a 
a, a, a self-study in Los Angeles. I, I, you know, I just hope we're treating all schools the same. You're already a new, you're already an established school that was a new school coming along. Exactly. A self-study essentially is an enrollment increase just for a different school. So you've already improved an enrollment increase in the same area. So again, I'd request that the board is treating all schools equally. This is Imelda Sehabat. Uh, Imelda Sehabat Goods. I have a comment. So by increasing uh, the additional students, when will they have to do their clinicals? I'm not a nurse, so please help me out. These additional students will not hit clinicals until January or February of 2022. Yeah, so, so that's a long wait for me. Correct. So there's. I, I, I just, this is just my comment to the board members. We need to be prepared. There's going to be a shortage. There's a lot of senior nurses. You know, um, I, I, if we approve it, I mean, if, if there's an issue down the road, we can reevaluate it. At this point in time, I think that we need to encourage um, nurses to get into that profession. That's just my comment. Thank you. Do we have any comments from the executive officer? Thank you, Michael. Um, I was not planning on making a comment, but I will. Um, you know, just hearing this, it um, seems to be a little contradictory to what I've been hearing um, with our various stakeholders. They talked about the dire need to pass 2288 in order for our students that are currently enrolled to progress and graduate. We decreased our, uh, our uh, regulatory standards from 25% um, that would be hours not in hands-on direct patient care down to as much as um, up to as much, sorry, as 75% where it is not completed in direct patient care in our specialty areas, OB, feeds, and psych mental health. And we have also uh, changed our regulatory standard in med surge and geriatrics to 50% versus the 25% that um, it will be reverting back to in June of 2021, um, just seven months from today. So my, my concern is I really want to make sure that the data that we're receiving is absolutely correct. Um, Dr. Wayne Boyer presented our workforce survey data that stated that LA was in a surplus. Um, we are very aware of the multiple regions throughout the state of California and that each region is affected differently. We are aware that with the previous um, enrollment increase for Chamberlain, that was in Rancho Cordova, and it was shown in that workforce survey that there was a need for that area, that there was not a surplus. And then now in the LA area, it was shown that there was not a need and that we are in a surplus. There are also multiple studies out there that talk about that nurses trained in the area want to work in the area. So I understand that you're stating a national um, uh, statistics uh, that are talking about a national shortage. Um, I would like to get some further clarification from that from you. Additionally, as you were talking about NCSBN, NCSBN put out a um, statement on their leader to leader special issue July 2020 edition. And one of the statements says, while there has been a landmark study on the outcome of replacing up to 50% of clinical experiences with simulation, this study did not include virtual simulation. As we heard from LA City College that was earlier on in this agenda, that their simulation is occurring off campus in a virtual environment. Um, they share this geographic area with you. Additionally, they say, go on to say, NCSBN goes and say, there have been no studies on the outcomes of programs that use more than 50% simulation. Currently in California with the passing of AD 2288, we are now at 50% for med surgeon um, geriatrics, but we are at 75% where there has not been any studies or outcomes shown on the efficacy of that. And we're at 75% now for OB feeds and psych mental health. I understand that um, public comment that happened earlier stated that without these waivers, 
without the assistance from DCA waivers, without the passage of AB 2288, that schools throughout California would not be able to progress. Um, I do understand that we're looking at timeliness. Um, I do uh, agree with Imelda that we do need to look at future workforce projections. But I also know that we do need to look at what's happening right here, right now. And as COVID is spiking, as our frontline workers are exhausted and that they are going on a leave, some are even working with a positive COVID test as long as they are not showing any um, active symptoms that we need to look at what we're, what were the stresses, the additional stresses that we're putting out onto our healthcare workers who are working on the front line. Um, so I have a lot to say. I think we just need more information. So if anybody on this call has more information, either through public comment um, from the school or their board members, um, I am willing to listen. Um, this is contradictory to what I've been hearing from our external stakeholders. This is contradictory to what we heard in the legislative session when they said that it was imperative that we pass 2288 in order to progress and graduate our students. And this is different than just what we heard from our public members that just spoke up today in public comment about needing the provisions in order to successfully graduate and progress the students that are currently enrolled. This is Elizabeth Woods. I have a question about this area of Los Angeles. It's a huge area, a large area with a huge population. I would think a lot of times when that happens that you have a surplus in one area and you don't have a surplus in the other, you may not have enough nurses. Does any, can anybody give an answer to that? Dr. Wayne Boyer, when you referenced that in your EIS, do you have further information on that to discuss the workforce study? I do have, uh, I have a, the national, the regional, again, the regional summits of uh, 2018 identifies the greater Los Angeles region to face a large surplus of RNs with projected new graduate growth much higher than needed. And uh, in 2019, uh, there were also issues with faculty vacancies were reported in California. That's what I have in my AIS. There was another report that was submitted. It's on the G drive, and I don't have access to that right now. Thank you, Wayne. Are there any questions from any more of the board members? Hearing no other questions, uh, Michael Jackson makes a recommendation and we vote no at this time. Is there a second? Seeing no second, I make a motion to approve. Can you um, restate the motion, please? My motion is to vote no to the enrollment increase. Okay, I second that motion. This is Dolores Trujillo. Are there any public comments? We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for the members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in. I would like to make a comment.
Crystal Aventino Tiango would like to make a comment. One second. Go ahead, Crystal. Hi, Chairman Jackson and members of the BRN. My name is Chris Aventino Tianco, and I am a proud alumnus and of and speaking in support of American Career College. As a graduate of both of their LVN and ADN program, I can speak firsthand about the quality of education at ACC, but most importantly, the opportunity. I knew I always wanted to help people, and while at the community college, I realized I wanted to pursue a career in the medical field. I struggled in getting classes that I needed to complete my prerequisite and was concerned in the long waiting list to get into the nursing program, which is when I chose to, to go to American Career College for a fast track LVN program. After working for 12 years as an LVN, I decided to pursue my RN degree at American Career College. The program and faculty were amazing. My experience was great and now I'm currently an RN too at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. If it were not for the opportunities afforded to me by American Career College, I would not be where I am today. I am asking that you approve ACC's request so that you can give more students like me the opportunity to realize their dream be of becoming a nurse. Thank you kindly. Charlotte Gula Moore would like to make a comment. Go ahead, Charlotte. Good afternoon, everyone. And I uh, thank you again for this opportunity to make this comment. And I do appreciate the discussion about this. I completely understand that various programs are still able to execute their student objectives and meet their goals to safely and um, innovatively uh, provide the students with what they need in order to successfully complete their programs to keep their uh, passing rates high. Um, so good job to you. But I will say we need to keep in mind we have already um, allowed for the simulations portion to be increased. And we are still facing increasing numbers with this current virus and this um, in this during this time of pandemic. I think we need to be mindful that uh, though programs may be doing well, the students are stressed. They are being asked to to do more sims, less clinical. We don't know what the environment looks like in these hospital settings or clinic settings. So to increase the enrollment rate, I think that it would be a little too um, uh, advantageous to, to, to increase those numbers. I think we should just continue with the current numbers that we have now and just make sure that we're providing a safe environment for the number of students that we have currently enrolled and or are allowed to have enrolled. I don't think this is the ideal time to be increasing enrollment when we're still facing a pandemic. I think we just need to buck, um, um, focus on what we're able to achieve and continue to do so because we don't know what's to come in 2021 one with the numbers still going up. So I, I, I do not support increasing enrollment for um, any program right now. I think we need to just be happy with what we have and continue to support our students who are currently in programs. Kyra Causing would like to make a comment. Kyra, go ahead. Thank you. Um, my, thank you so much. My name is Kyra Causing, and I'm an American Career College alumnus in support to request the increase in enrollment. I have experience as both a phlebotomist and an LVN. My dream was to follow my late mother's footsteps to become a registered nurse. She passed away 12 years ago of acute myeloid leukemia. It took a long time as I was on many wait lists for community college um, ADN programs. And I had to retake general education classes that expired during that time. Like many of my peers, I was close to giving up and I found ACC. 
The school was a breath of fresh air for me because the program was excellent. The faculty and staff worked very hard to ensure our entire cohort progressed and graduated on time despite all the COVID-19 pandemic issues. I'm really proud of my ACC peers and faculty for all that we were able to accomplish this year. I recently graduated actually just last month and passed my NCLEX as well, and I'm continuing my education. ACC gave me the foundation I needed to take a huge step towards my goal of working with patients and families like mine who lost their loved ones to acute myeloid leukemia in the BAML effort. Thank you and please support these students who are seeking to fulfill their dreams of becoming a nurse. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Carrie Ann Waybrew would like to make a comment. Go ahead, Carrie Ann. Yeah, um, I heard one of the board members mention about faculty vacancies being of concern. And, you know, when you have students that become RNs, a lot of people go on to further their education, meaning they go on to bachelor's or master's programs or doctoral degrees to get become faculty. And it sounds like we need more nursing faculty. So an entryway into that would be having a start in an associate degree program, much like what ACC offers. Um, and the program is in good standing and has demonstrated their ability to meet those requirements. So um, that's my comment. Albert McNames would like to make a comment. Sorry. Albert, you're unmuted. Yes, this is the campus. We, we request to have longer than the two minute uh, public comment time. We were muted before and didn't get a chance to respond to Executive Director Melby's uh, comments, but I will be brief. Uh, one, you know, one of the things is we wanted to make sure we reiterated, we do have a simulation lab on campus with high fidelity, man high fidelity mannequins. I and mean, also at AB 2288, it wasn't just about stimulation hours and getting students ability to graduate. It was also priming the pump for much needed RNs on the backside of this pandemic. Um, she even spoke to the fact that our nurses are working hard. They're burnt out. There we have nurses working that have COVID. That just points to the dire need for more nurses right now. Our placement rate of 98%, we're placing just about every single nurse we have over the last five years in Los Angeles. So that is a direct contradiction to the study that there's a surplus of RNs. We have letters from our employers talking about they need and they depend on our graduates to fill nursing vacancies they have at their hospitals. Um, you know, we, we've demonstrated everything, the quality of our program, quality of our faculty, quality of our students. We demonstrate there's no clinical faculty. Um, there's absolutely no reason why the board would not accept this application, this approval. And I'd hate to say it, but it feels like there's personal agendas getting in the way of public safety at this point. Um, again, we, we request that the board reconsider Mr. Jackson's motion and vote to approve the enrollment increase. Vivian, Vivian would like to make a comment. My name is- Go ahead, Eva. Vivian. Oh, can everybody hear me? Oh, oh okay. We, we can, name, go ahead. Okay, sorry. My name is Vivian um, Nguyen. I am a proud alumni of ACC, and I was really grateful to find this school. Um, I had my bachelor's degree in sociology, but I decided to become a nurse and I had a lot of trouble getting my prerequisites done since I already had my bachelor's degree and I was always waitlisted. So I feel this was a great program. We never had a shortage of faculty, no classes were canceled and all the clinical sites were really helpful. And currently I work as an RN at Monterey Park Hospital and we do have a big shortage right now. Um, a lot of us are burned out, we're out of ratio because a lot of our coworkers are getting sick, um, especially from our COVID unit. And I also work um, 
in a skilled nursing facility as well as home health. And I am pursuing my education and I'm currently in the FNP program at this time. So I was really grateful to be able to complete this program and use all my skills now as a nurse because now I can further my education and I don't plan on stopping. So um, I feel this is the perfect program and I hope that they can increase enrollment. So we do have more nurses on the floor and I feel that during this pandemic, because we have students as our hospital at our hospital right now as well. And I feel that it's a great time to actually be a student at a hospital during a pandemic because you learn what it's really like to be a nurse. It's not always butterflies and rainbows. So thank you. Susan Palet would like to make a comment. Susan, go ahead. Susan? Sorry, I guess Susan left. Ruth Terry would like to make a comment. Go ahead, Ruth. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is Ruth Terry and I respectfully ask that you reconsider your motion on American Career College. We all know that the COVID has raised havoc for the world, but now with the vaccine on its way, we have to begin to look to the future. Two years, two years from now seems adequate for us to uh, allow the school to admit uh, more students uh, to fill the shortage that we will have. So I would think that you, given your motions today, that you would really reconsider this motion for American Career College. Thank you. We're gonna we're gonna try Susan Palet one more time. Susan, can you hear us? Sorry, she states her speakers aren't working, but okay. Well, if you get that picked, Susan, we'll come back to you. Is there anybody else? Board President Jackson, there are no more requests for public comment. Shall I close the window? There's no more requests for public comment. Please close the window. I'd like to call for the vote at this time. Michael Jackson votes no to enrollment increase. Kenneth Marlboro. Uh, this is Ken Marlboro. I, I think we're going down the same path here. Um, the motion on the floor is to not have an enrollment increase. So if you don't want the enrollment increase, I believe the vote should be yes. If you do, if you don't agree with that, you should say no. Is that correct, Ressa? Uh, yes, Ken. Thanks for making that clarification. Uh, so that, that's correct. To reiterate, the motion was to reject the enrollment increase. So a yes on that motion is rejecting the enrollment increase. A no is obviously um, not to reject. Mr. Jackson, do you need to re-vote again or are you? I'm making a motion that we reject the enrollment increase. So Michael's vote would presumably be a, a yes. Okay, Ken Marlboro, Ken Marlboro is uh, no. Dolores Trujillo. I'm voting to reject the enrollment increase. Is 
Is that a yes or a no? That would be a yes on yes. this motion. Yes. Right, yes. Thank you. Elizabeth Wood? Elizabeth Wood, no. Imelda Seha Bukowitz? Imelda Seha Bukowitz, no. Karen Skelton? Skelton, no. Mary Fagan? Fagan, no. We have two yeses and five noes. Is that what I got? Correct. Okay, move along to the agenda item uh, 10.9.3. Well, does anybody have a different motion on this agenda yes. item? Yes, I make a motion to approve the increase of 30. Uh, I think it's, to I'm sorry, it was to increase 30 or was it increase 20? I forgot what it was. The request was in, to enroll 30 students five times a year for a total of 150 students. That is my motion. Second the motion. What? Board President Jackson. My motion, my uh, vote is to vote against it. And me being a frontline worker and being on this board for a significant amount of time and listening to all the clinical displacement that has taken place, especially in this area, I'm voting a resounding no against the enrollment increase. Ken Marlboro? Marlboro, yes. Dolores Trujillo? I'm voting no. Because as a frontline worker, I know that hospitals are looking for experienced nurses. And during this pandemic, education for any new grads has been put aside in most hospitals. Elizabeth Woods? Woods, yes. Imelda, say how about that? I'm voting yes. Karen Skelton. Skelton, yes. Mary Fagan. Mary Fagan votes yes. That concludes our vote. I have two no's and five yeses. Correct. Enrollment increase passes. Moving on to agenda item 10.9.3. Discussion of possible action regarding acceptance of changes to an approved nursing education program for Gurnick Academy of Medical Arts Baccalaureate Degree Nursing Program, requesting a major curriculum revision with enrollment increase. They will, this will be presented by Jeanette Wackerly, Supervising Nursing Education Consultant. Are you, am I on? Yes. You uh, are. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you. With me today on the telephone is Samantha Manalosa. Sanchez, she's the Dean of Nursing for Gurnick Academy. Gurnick Academy of Medical Arts BSN program was approved in September 12th of 2019. The program admitted students into the program itself on May 5th, 2020. The original request from the school was for four cohorts of 28 students in each cohort. The board registered nursing meeting on September 12th, 2019 in San Diego, the board voted to take the following action to grant changes to an approved program, addition of a new campus or location for a pre licensure nursing program, it's a BSN program, with an enrollment pattern of 28 students two times per year, and asked that the school return in October 2020 with a request for a substantive change, which is the addition of two more cohorts of 28 eight students, meaning four cohorts of 28 students four times a year. This substantive change is to grant approval for the original request for the four cohorts of 28 students. Now adding the other two cohorts with the board's approval to 112 students. Vernick Academy has the approved clinical sites for these in the East Bay. They are actually located in Concord, and they have East Bay clinicals, Concord clinicals, and Solano area clinicals. 
this program itself, uh, Kernick Academy, really its major campus is in Fresno. So this is a move to put a BSN program, a generic track in Concord. So the request is for the approval of two more cohorts of 28 students. Are there any questions? Any questions from the board? No questions from the board. I have a question. Did we just approve a increase in Concord already? You did. It's a brand new, it's uh, Unitech. They just came into that. What's unusual about this is both schools are in the same building. Gurnick was there before Unitech went in with an LVN program and Unitech has an LVN program. So their you know, location is right together. So yes, you did do an approval for a new program in Concord, but again, Gurnick was preceded them in the same location for a BSN program. But at the time that you entertained the idea of a new school for Gurnick there, Unitech was not in the picture yet. I don't understand, I, I believe they weren't there yet. So this is, uh, it was an action that was done in San Diego to limit the first cohorts to two cohorts at a time and to come back in October to add the other two cohorts of 28 to a total of 112. Are there any comments or discussion? Any comment? Yeah, this is uh, Elizabeth Woods. I do have a question. I'm somewhat confused about this whole new program. Is it a whole new program with new faculty? It is a whole new program located in Concord uh, on Willow Pass Road. And so they started their BSM program as with NBSM program. They have a period of time when the students are enrolled and they're not ready to go into clinical yet. So they've been in Concord since September 12th, 19. They actually, um, students were in the program by May 5th of 2020. But they have two different faculty or no? Same faculty. Asking the faculty, the faculty. The faculty is Gurnick's faculty. They are, a, they are a faculty located in Concord. They have a separate school in Fresno. The faculties are not coming at all. Thank you. This is Mary Fagan. Have they had a class of BSN graduates finished? Not yet. So they don't have any NCLEX results? They do not. Their NCLEX results are all for their ADN program in Fresno. It's you reading on the information here. <coughs> Is there a motion from the board? This is email to say have best wish. Sometimes competition is good. You know, and obviously if both schools feel that there's a need there. This is there's a need there. Yeah. Again, is it common for a school to ask for an increase in enrollment before they've had their first group of graduates? This was, a, I have to step in with, this was an action from the uh, at board at a period of time in which they only allowed for two cohorts of 28 and to come back six months later and ask for the next two cohorts of 28. Uh -huh. So it's a very different animal than somebody coming in with a total picture of how many they want. And Unitech came in with a large number of original students to come into the program. 
so and they were part on of this their... agenda they were uh, 10.8 okay is there a motion yeah, I, I, this is Betty again. I guess I have uh, the issue is we don't know what they've done on the NCLEX. Well, neither we don't. Is that correct? We have a new school. We don't have an, an NCLEX school. No, I know that, but then they want to increase the what they got though. This is a very mm. modest increase. I would like to increase it, however, without knowing uh, their NCLEX, because they don't have one. Um, I would say we should leave it the same and see how they do, and then well, I decide to. I have to advocate for them, because they've had a school in Fresno for some time. Their scores are up there for their uh, ADN program, 82 and 79%. So they have a track record as a producer of RNs in an ADN program. I don't have any reason to think that they would not have a similar type of uh, scoring with a BSN program. You know, I'm going to make a motion to approve only because we've already approved Unitech and I don't think that it's right. I think in the future, if we have the same situation, we need to put them back to back. Um, if they're in the same locations and same, just about everything. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make a motion to approve. Is there a second? This is Mary, I'll second that. Any comments from the board members? Seeing no comments from the board members, any public comments? We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in the request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder of your as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in. I would like to make a comment. Samantha Manlosa Sanchez would like to make a comment. Samantha, go ahead. Thank you to the board uh, moderator. Good afternoon to all. And thank you to um, the board president, Mr. Michael Jackson, the board members, and the supervisor nursing education consultant, Ms. Wackerly, for your guidance. We have waited a year. Um, we were there last year in San Diego. Our approval was kind of different. Um, at first it was four, and then they wanted to make sure to come back um, another year. And we patiently and humbly um, came to the board. And we've been in that building in Concord for 15 years in that building since 2005. And uh, here we are with diplomacy and requesting the board that um, to allow, this is not an increase, this was the original request that we've had way back. So thank you very much for your consideration. And we are, and we respect all the schools. Um, we've been there for many years and I hope you understand. Thank you for your consideration. Humbly, we are requesting for your approval. Susan Pilette, would you like to try again? 
Susan, go ahead. Sorry, Susan's still not working. <laughs> Board President Jackson, that is all the requests for public comment. Would you like me to close the window? Uh, yes, please call, close the window and call for the vote, please. Board President Jackson. I'm going to vote yes for, for this school because of the location where they are and the need for them. Ken Marlboro. Marlboro, yes. Dolores Trujillo. I was trying to unmute. Yes. Elizabeth Woods. Woods, yes. Imelda Sehabakowitz. Imelda, yes. Karen Skelton. Karen Skelton. Mary Fagan. Fagan, yes. Karen Skelton, one more time. Board President Jackson, suggestion. Can we wait a second for her to join back on? Sure. Karen Skelton. Board moderator, do you want to try opening her microphone? Karen Skelton, are you there? BRN moderator, we had a quorum. The motion would carry. Thank you. Yes, sir. We had six yeses. Agenda item 10.10, .10, discussion and possible action regarding recommendation to accept initial approval of a new advanced practice nursing education program for Toro University Nurse Practitioner Program. Jeanette Wackerly, supervisor, supervising nursing education consultant, will present this program. Thank you. This is Jeanette Wackerly again, and I want to introduce Terry Moore Harper. She's on the telephone. She's the interim dean for the college for uh, Turo for their nurse practitioner program. They have been in existence for a while, and we're just taking care to approve the programs that have not had board approval before. So let me just give a little background. The initial request for approval of a family nurse practitioner program at Toro University in California. The content offered was, was focused, first of all, on a doctorate of nursing practice degree and a post-master's certificate program. They are uh, a program that is CCNE approved and they've been approved since 2016. They have uh, received five full years from CCNE approval and they're up for a reapproval in March of 2021. Graduates of the DMP, FNP, and the FNP certificate program are eligible for national certification as a certified family nurse practitioner by the American Nurses Credentialing Center and or the American Academy of Nurse Practitioners Certification Programs. The curriculum for the DMP, FNP, and the FNP certification program are based on the standards of the American Association of Colleges of Nursing 
the essentials of doctoral education for advanced nursing practice and national organization for nurse practitioners known. There are nine core competencies which this program meets with their students. So the program itself is um, located, as I said, in Vallejo. It's a small program. It's actually at an old Navy base, and I went and visited them through Zoom. I think we're doing all our visits through Zoom now. And they took me on a tour. And it, they have a wonderful facility there for their faculty and students. The cost of the program uh, for students is original $500 to apply. And then for every unit they take, it's $1,000 per unit per semester. Uh, there's 46 semester units. And so the students also have to pay book and supplies, and that's about 3,000. I have to move my page here. I can't. So today, I, I don't know that I put on the report. They have had a number of students, but because of the uh, COVID within California and within that location, and the, they're appealing to students who are, uh, they're not the, uh, what do I want to call them? They're not necessarily uh, underserved students, but the area that they're taking students is underserved. So one of the things with COVID was that they needed to change from the doctorate program to just the MSN uh, program. And I would ask uh, Terry Harper to explain a little bit. But anyway, this August 20th was when we did the visit. It was our Zoom. And Dr. Terry Harper at that time was the, uh, she was the one that gave us the tour. And we met some faculty and we never met the vice presidents. So in summary, uh, I would like to recommend Toro University School of Nursing has met all the regulatory requirements by the California Code of Regulations 1480 through 1484 for a family nurse practitioner program, whether at the doctorate level or at the certificate. So if you will please consider approving Toro University for their MP programs. I make a recommendation that we approve Toro University nurse practitioner program. I'll second that approval. Are there any comments from the board? No comments from the board, public comment. We will be opening for public comment now. I will be activating the question and answer feature. Please refer to the screen share for members of the public to see how they should type in their request for comment. I've activated the question and answer feature. Members of the public can indicate that they would like to make a comment by typing into the question box, I would like to make a comment. Please remember, you will have two to three minutes to make your comments. I will not give a reminder as your time approaches. I do not want to interrupt you nor cause you to lose your train of thought. I will mute your microphone and inform you that your time has expired and we'll move on to the next member of the public. I'll pause for a moment for members of the public to type in, I would like to make a comment. Board President Jackson, there are no public requests for comment. Would you like me to close this window? Yes, please close the window and we'll call for the vote. Michael Jackson votes yes. Ken Marlboro? Marlboro votes yes. Dolores Trillium? Yes. Elizabeth Woods? Woods, yes. Imelda Sehabakowitz? They have that good, yes. Karen Skelton? Skelton, yes. Mary Fagan? Fagan, yes. This concludes our vote. Thank you very much. Agenda item 10.11. Discussion and possible action regarding acceptance of the annual 2019-2020 
Education Licensing Committee Goals and Objectives Achievement Report. As the Education Licensing Committee liaison, I am presenting the ELC Annual Report of Goals and Achievements for, the, for 19, 2019 and 2020. The ELC Goals and Objectives are reviewed biannually and we got revised as needed. In 2019, these goals and objectives were aligned with the 2018 through 2021 BRN Strategic Plan and the mission of the DCA and BRN. Annually, these goals and objectives are reviewed and achievements are included. The 2019-2020 achievement report is included in the materials packet. This concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you very much for your report. I don't think there's any action for us to take at this time. Thank you. Agenda item 10.12, NCLEX update. This will be presented by Katie Darty, nursing education consultant. Katie. Katie, can you hear us? Katie, can you hear us? The moderator will reorder the agenda and move on to 10.13 and then come back okay. to her. Okay. Agenda item 10.13, licensing program update. This will be presented by Christina Sprague, Deputy Chief of Licensing. Sorry, sorry, go ahead, Christina. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Christina Sprague. I'm the Deputy Chief of Licensing, and I will be giving the licensing program updates. Our licensing evaluators are currently processing the initial review of California U.S. exam and international um, endorsement applications received in the month of September. Our advanced practice applications are being proce processed for the month of August. Outgoing verifications received in the month of September and our inactive and back to active requests received in the month of November. Our licensing staff have been working overtime to bring application processing up to date. And our international analysts have been assisting one day a week, um, as well as working overtime with our US evaluators to process the US endorsement applications. We are continuously updating and monitoring work assignments and completion worksheets to ensure productivity during our overtime. In addition, we are streamlining efforts. Um, our streamlining efforts are underway to reduce the processing time for advanced practice application, which includes scanning of all incoming advanced practice documents uh, to become more paperless and assist with processing in a telework environment. New staff have been trained on the nurse practitioner application processing, which allows another trained analyst to help, to help us with bringing back, uh, bringing down um, bringing our nurse practitioner applications up to date. Our California nursing program um, transcripts, the board continues to receive transcripts via the cloud for California applicants and has been processing those applications as transcripts are received. I have provided a chart in my report that outlines um, the number of graduating programs that we have had during the period of July through October. That number was 70. I have added some, or I will provide you with some updated information um, for notification of graduating classes that we've received through, um, through October, or excuse me, through mid-November. That number is uh, 87 graduating programs. 
uh, with a number of programs that submitted transcripts at 76 and the number of programs that have already been processed at 69, um, which leaves us with um, seven programs that we have pending transcripts that we've received and 11 programs that we're waiting for transmission of transcripts. In regards to our statistics, we continue to use Qbert to create and run various reports. We utilize these custom reports to find areas of improvement in our processes, as well as uh, better predict workflow fluctuations and assign application workload to staff. After recent updates to the Qbert platform, there were issues running our daily workload reports and the Office of Information Services within DCA was assisting the board with and our licensing supervisors by running these reports uh, three times a day. The issue with regards to the Qbert platform has now been resolved and BRN staff are once again able to run our own reports. Uh, the, average, the average processing time, part of those reports, one of them is the average processing time statistics. This table captures the processing time for exam and endorsement applications. Um, and for exam applications, that is receipt of the application to approval of the application to exam. So making the, the individual eligible to exam. And for endorsement applications, it's receipt of application to licensure. And for fiscal year 2021, as of October 26th, our um, average processing time for exams is 46 days and for endorsements is 64 days. Our licensing applications received provides the total number of applications the board has received by fiscal year. And the information provided in the chart is through September 2020. Um, and that's, that is a total of 11,664 applications. Those are exam, endorsement, repeat, reapply, and advanced practice. Additional requests received um, table provides a total number of outgoing verifications and our inactive to active requests um, received by fiscal year. And again, this information is through September 2020. Um, and we have received a total of 4,400 outgoing verifications and 284 inactive to active requests. Staff updates, our licensing program recently filled two positions. Um, Elsa Baruman was promoted from an Associate Governmental Program Analyst within our International Evaluations Unit to the Staff Service Manager 1 position within that same unit. Melissa Lara is a new AGPA to the Evaluations and Advanced Practice Unit and will be our licensing trainer and Breeze subject matter expert. Melissa is also being trained on um, processing of nurse practitioner applications to assist with our uh, re reducing our processing time in, in that area. We currently have two vacant positions due to staff movement that are in various stages of the recruitment process. One program technician, two in our U.S. evaluations unit, and one AGPA in our international evaluations unit, um, which was Elsa Baruman's position. And uh, that completes my licensing program report. Uh, does the board have any questions? This is Mary Fagan. Uh, thank you for that report. I think I understood that you said that the increase in the um, processing time was related to issues with the Qbert system. Is that correct? No, the Qbert or the Qbert system is actually our reporting system, and it's it's basically the database that or the reporting mechanism that pulls information out of our Breeze database. So it it just compiles reports. So what do you attribute the increase of from? from fiscal year 1920 to fiscal year 2021 for both exam and endorsement? So there are, there are well, uh, one of the biggest reasons, of course, was uh, due to COVID, our staff moving into a telework environment. Um, we had made a number of changes within our processes all, already prior to COVID, um, but within our office, which accommodated um, 
multiple monitors. Um, staff had scanners for paper documents. Um, they were our, our staff that were dealing with paperless applications used multiple monitors to review um, do paperless documents, electronic documents, as well as have our Breeze database system up. So they were working um, seamlessly between the two monitors and um, moving to a telework environment. Uh, they're working on laptops or home computers. They don't have the setup that they've had in office. They are also um, using a virtual cloud database or cloud-based system that the department um, has set up for the all of the DCA staff, um, which is quite a bit slower than what they're accustomed to using um, the systems that we are using in office. It does take a little longer for them to search for documents within our, our shared drive, so our electronic sus suspense. Um, they're not, of course, they don't have multiple monitors so that they are having to switch between um, tabs going from one screen to another um, to review documents and then to update the information within Breeze. So it has definitely um, caused us to, to um, it's, you know, to uh, increase our processing times over, over the past eight months. Thank you. Do you anticipate them to stay the same until people are able to get back to the office? We are actually working on um, reducing those those processing times currently. Um, as I said, we do have we have redirect well not fully redirected, but we have um, gained assistance from other areas within the licensing our international evaluations unit so that um, they can help us to reduce the processing time um, so that we can, you know, be within our statutory timeframes, which we currently are. Um, in addition, we are training other staff to work within our advanced practice areas so that we can reduce processing times there as well. We are taking additional steps to um, make additional process uh, streamlining um, so that it would potentially reduce staff's needs to search for additional documents within the system, which we have found uh, was one of the one of the um, major reasons why it's the it takes staff longer to find documents because of the virtual desktop. So. Um, we are taking additional steps to make those process changes. So we do hope to um, continue to reduce that average processing time as we move forward, as we know that we potentially will still be in this telework environment um, for a number of months. Thank you. Any additional questions? No additional questions. We're getting some feedback. Thank you. Can we go back to the uh, one item that Katie Doherty was supposed to present? Absolutely. Agenda item 10.12, NCLEX update. Katie, are you available? And can you hear me? Yes, thank you, Katie. <laughs> oh, well, Welcome thank back. Well, oh, well, thank you, Peter. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Katie Doherty. Uh, this is an information only item. I'm uh, an NEC and the NCLEX AM, uh, liaison. There are five tables of data that we're presenting this, uh, this afternoon. The first table of data is table one. We're presenting the rolling total, 12 month rolling total index re uh, results for October 1, 2019 through September 30, 2020. California had a total of 11,862 first time test takers and a pass rate of 90.79%. Uh, in the United States and its territories, inclusive of California as well, there were 174,750 first-time test takers and an 86.76 uh, 
pass rate. Uh, when we look at this in comparison to the 2019 figures and taking into account that there were, there were two quarters of COVID-related testing that occurred, the uh, pass rate for California decreased 0.77%. It was actually 91.56 in 2019. And throughout the United States and in its territories, the pass rate in 2019 was 88.07%. So that's a decrease of the national rate of 1.31%. Any questions about that first table? Uh, in addition to uh, talking about the first table and the results there, typically I offer a perspective across the U.S., the 12-month rolling rates for uh, first-time testers in the range of 5,000, uh, excuse me, 8,202 to 13,229. Texas had 13,229 testers and a pass rate of 91.0%. California had uh, first-time testers of 11,862 and a pass rate of 90.79%. So we're kind of neck and neck. We're less than 0.21% compared to Texas. Texas actually had over 1,300 more first-time testers. That was followed by Ohio, who had 8,202 testers, and their pass rate was 84.59%. And then that is followed by New York, who had 11,012 testers, and their pass rate was 83.61%. Any questions about table one before I move to table two? Table two is reporting the quarter of July 1 through 2020 through 930 20. California had 5,070 first time test takers and a pass rate of 91.52%. And again, here, when comparing this to the same quarter in 2019, uh, there were uh, 215 fewer testers in 2020, and the pass rate uh, for 2020 is down by 1.8% as compared to 2019, which was 93.34%. Again, COVID may have something to do with that. When we look at the 12 um, excuse me, when we look at the quarter, uh, quarterly comparison for this partic particular quarter, July through September, and we're talking about first-time testers in the range of, of uh, 3,196 to 5,070, California is number one with 91.52 for the quarter, Pennsylvania is uh, 3,564 testers and has a pass rate of 90.82. That's followed by Texas, who had 3,196 and a pass rate for the quarter of 88.30. And that's followed by New York, who had 4,765 first time testers and a pass rate of 81.99. So California uh, has sustained their high rates uh, despite uh, the impact on COVID. If you recall, uh, the impact of COVID was that the National Council of State Boards uh, made the decision to reduce the number of test types, board test items uh, back in March of uh, 2020, at the end of March. And that uh, number of 60 board test items as a minimum and 130 maximum scored items has remained in place for the last, last two quarters and now will remain in place through March 31 of 2023. And there's information in your packet on page two of the AIS that has to do with those modifications of the testing moving forward through March 31 of 2023. 
put in free. Uh, also, uh, in the AIS is some information about next generation text newsletters and the monitoring information. Any questions about table one and two? Then I'll move to table three in your packet, and that's the quarterly results presented by degree type. As you can see there, uh, that uh, when we look at the comparison with 2019, uh, nationally for all degree, degree types, there was an increase in the number of testers of over a little over 7,000, 165. And the pass rate, the aggregated pass rate for national, for all degree types, was decreased to 3.4% when compared with the 2019, uh, which was at 88.2%. California, by all degree types, for this quarter, July through September, uh, you can see that we had uh, basically, when compared to the same quarter in 2019, we had 215 fewer testers in 2020. The pass rate uh, in uh, 2020 is 91.5, and in 2019 it was 93.3 percent. When the when you look at the distribution by uh, degree type. Uh, what you'll see is, again, the pass rates by the group type also decrease slightly. Uh, the associate degree by the degree type decreased 4.8%. For California, it decreased 1.6%. For um, the BSN and entry level masters, Nationally, the pass rate decreased in comparing the same quarter uh, of uh, 2019. The national rate decreased 2.1% and California decreased 2.0%. Any questions about table three? Moving on then to table uh, four and five. These are the customary annual trended results that you receive. Uh, the first is the comparison of uh, trended California and national. And again, what we're highlighting in the trended report is the July to June 30, 2019, 2020. As you can see, uh, California had the pass rate for that particular annual period of 91.60% as compared to the national rate of 87.92%. What's notable is this marks California's sixth year of annual pass, pass rates in California that have been consistently higher than the national rates. And the, the uh, difference in the rates of California back in 14-15 was 1.68 higher in and then all the way to the present 2019 to 2020 California's rate is 3.67 percent higher than the national rate. So again we commend the uh, educators in the state of California for the outstanding job that they continue to do to prepare their graduates to be successful on the internet and exceed uh, the national rates on a consistent basis. The final table being presented uh, is table five. This is the first time comparison trended for internationally educated for 1920. You can see that nationally there were a total for the G July 1 through June 30 time period, there were nationally 17,256 first-time testers, and the national rate for internationally educated was 44.5%. In California, uh, the, uh, the number of testers was 1,223, and the pass rate was 35.8. Again, when you look at the trend of data for internationally educated, you can see that 
uh, the variation year over year uh, continues to be uh, quite similar. Are there any questions that I might answer? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. Is that the conclusion? My report, unless you had any follow up questions. I don't have any far, further questions. I'd like to ask the board members if they like to take a, a break for about a half an hour. Yes, yes, please. Uh, Michael, this is Reza, board council. Can I just ask a question? Um, um, just with regard to timing and planning some of the items coming up in closed session, um, is it the intent to just power through all of the agenda items in the closed session today? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that just so we don't go past five p.m. potentially during the closed session, and then uh, we just come back to open session just to adjourn the meeting. Oh, uh, that's correct. We could do that because after uh, this, this was the bulk of the meeting. Yeah. I, I just have a question. If it's after five, is um, staff? able to work after five are they permitted to get overtime or come time or whatever they need to get i think i mean i don't i can't say for sure i don't know how that works but i think that the staff who are going to be remaining on uh such as myself of course and, and some of the other staff are, are not really subject to um to that Okay, I, 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 think I assume there will not be an issue. Okay, hey, Melda, this is uh, Lori. Okay, Lori, thank you. So, yeah, if if any overtime is needed, it would be supported. Okay, so with that, uh, unless anybody else has anything, I, I I just wanted to get that clear before um, board members decided whether to take a break. So. Can we come back at 415? Yes. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. We will be back at 415. Thank you. Thank you. Oh.